Global economic tensions were aired at an Asia-Pacific summit on Saturday, with the Chinese regime and the United States exchanging veiled criticisms over trade protectionism, intellectual property and the balance of global growth. Among the highlights was Chinese leader Hu Jintao pushing for a greater say in the global economy, and the U.S. pushing for a trading hub of Pacific nations to cement its role in the region. At the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit of 21 Nations held in Hawaii over the weekend, Chinese leader Hu Jintao said countries should work together to combat the rising threat of protectionism and maintain economic growth. Among the Chinese regime's concerns are U.S. moves to sanction China if it does not allow its currency to appreciate. Rising inflationary pressures confront emerging markets. Protectionism in various forms is on the notable increase. Global economic recovery is fraught with greater instability and uncertainty. Hu said China would be pushing for a greater say in the global economic order. It's apparently already playing out, as the European Union turns to the Chinese regime for financial support. U.S. President Barack Obama said both countries could benefit from mutual trade, but the Chinese regime needed to play by the rules. He said it was not acceptable that the intellectual property of U.S. firms was not adequately protected in China, and China's undervalued currency was giving Chinese exports an unfair advantage. Seventeen people have been jailed in northwest China's city of Lanzhou. The individuals were arrested while protesting housing demolitions carried out by city authorities. The charges they were convicted of included beating and throwing bricks at police officers who were tearing apart their makeshift housing. Sentences range from three to six months in prison. The Communist Party's official mouthpiece Xinhua called the apparent violent confrontation a scenario which has become all too familiar in China in recent years. Some political experts estimate there are thousands of similar confrontations each year. Thousands of Brazilian security forces backed by helicopters and armoured vehicles enter Rio de Janeiro's Rocina slum. The move is an effort to boost security ahead of the upcoming World Cup. Thousands of Brazilian police backed by helicopters and armoured vehicles entered Rio de Janeiro's sprawling Rocina slum in the early hours of Sunday morning. Authorities said that at least 3,000 police, 24 armored vehicles and seven helicopters participated in the operation. The aim is to pacify the slum ahead of the 2014 World Cup and the 2016 Olympics. The operation was headed by the Elite Police Special Operations Unit, BOPE, who searched the area for drugs, guns and wanted gang members. No shots were reported in the operation. The sprawling hillside community, home to more than 100,000 people and close to some of Rio's most exclusive areas and best beaches, is believed to be the main drug distribution point in Brazil's second largest city. It is the latest and most ambitious target for a pacification program that has already ousted drug gangs from 18 slums. The program accompanies Rio's revival as a center of Brazil's oil wealth and host of huge upcoming sporting events. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, November 14th, 2011, and I'm Darko. This is my website, ggnonline.com. Uh, ggnonline.com, that's what it is. And ddarko2012 is my YouTube channel, that's ddarko2012. Okay, I have a poll up here, it's a new poll. Um, it says the next CEO for the corporation known as the United States of America will be first the first gay Caucasian Hispanic Asian man, the first gay Caucasian Hispanic Asian woman, the first transsexual hermaphrodite, etc., the first cyborg, or the first alien from off planet. Um, you can go in there and vote. Um, it's kind of a comical poll, but at the same time, there's some truth to it because it's always got to be the shock and awe of the presidency now because uh, the slaves, the sheeple, the plebes, whatever you want to call them, the serfs, um, right now um, are just waiting for some kind of messiah to come drop out of the sky. And, and just save them from everything. And I, they do that at every election. You know, before you'd have re revolutions and stuff, so they replaced it with uh, with democratic elections so people can go push buttons 
and they can feel like they're empowered, they've become empowered and they have choice in the matter when they don't. It's never been a democracy. Uh, it's kind of just been an illusion of democracy over the past hundred years, if, um, if not a little bit longer. But for the most time, we're still peasants. We're still serfs on the farm. It's just that the farm has changed. And um, so um, as the slaves are starting to realize that they do not live in a democracy and they never did, that they're still slaves, they're just financial tax slaves, they're starting to revolt. And so the powers that be, uh, being that they are the social engineers that de design society 20, 50, 100, 500 years in advance, they know what the slaves are going to think. They're very predictable. And um, so they know that uh, by putting out a, a, a a black president uh, in the last election that would help get the uh, uh, whoever they wanted in and it would be able to uh, polarize and buy enough votes uh, not just in the black community because there's actually a lot of black uh, uh, people right now that didn't vote for Obama or voted for him and said this guy is a shill and they acknowledge it yet it's a lot of them the voters were white people that felt guilty for a quote you know um, what was done to the uh, black people or because maybe they feel like, you know, I'm not a racist, so I'm going to vote for a black man. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't even really all that black uh, to come find out. But uh, either way, um, I said that it could be a female president, right, the next one. So it's, it, they're going to continue with this shock and all and, and, and the illusion. It's very Masonic and Luciferian, this, this kind of illusion of equality and virtue and all these little words that they put out there. So let's see who the next president's going to be because, honestly, it could be the next gay, the first gay president, the first Hispanic, the first Asian, the first uh, cyborg, the first alien, something uh, besides an old white man because they just can't can't sell that bullshit of an idea, a concept anymore to the uh, to the plebs, and that's because of what the internet, because there's all these dissenting voices being heard that's never been uh, there for the for the slaves before, and so now they're trying to tighten that in, tighten that up. Okay, you can follow me um, by email right here by submitting uh, your email address here. Um, I. I don't believe it gets shared with anybody else. So if you put it in there, you get uh, updates from GGN. Also, there's a donate button over here. I'd like to thank uh, my most recent donors. Um, usually it's the same donors over and over again. And I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that's usually how it is. And um, I just want to say thank you so much. God bless you. And um, I've had recent new donors too. And um, I just, I don't know what else to say, but thank you very, very much. It's much, much appreciated to keep me going to do this. Um, there's a news archive over there, and I'm going to keep moving. I know I went through a lot in this introduction, but uh, I don't do it every time. So, okay, so you just saw, we just saw these videos here um, of basically they're trying to set up uh, something similar to the transatlantic union uh, that's going to be coming down the road. Uh, Europeans, uh, people in, in North America, are definitely um, aware of the North American Union and then um, the uh, kind of emerging of the European Union, North American Union, the transatlantic uh, partnership, whatever they're going to call it. It's always in the form of trade, right? And this is what they're talking about right here. Now, China just wants to make sure that they're going to be part of this, as they said, at new world economic order, right? They want to be part of this economic order. That's what they want to make sure of. And uh, so they're bypassing the transatlantic because a lot of people are aware of it. A lot of controversy, and so they go to the uh, the next place, which is what slave labor, Vietnam, Bangla, you know, uh, not Bangladesh, but uh, all the Indonesia, all these places that are basically slave labor. They call it fair trade. It's not fair. It's not uh, fair trade. It's free trade. That's what they call it. And uh, so you had Obama making a bunch of threats and stuff like that. And uh, a lot of stuff going on right now where the Chinese are, are actually having their own little bit of a, a, a revolt right now. Um, there's been a lot of uh, dissent in China right now. With um, uh, the, You have the army officers that actually um, went AWOL. And, of course, they were all shot dead. No one knows why or how because it's very tight-knit, uh, the information that gets out over there. But 17 jailed. And guess what? Remember what they said? They said, what? These were makeshift homes. These were homeless people that they, that they were getting into, uh, getting into it with. They were homeless people. And uh, they said they were beating police officers. Well, I'm sure the police officers weren't acting uh, all that friendly. Uh, Brazilian police swooped to pacify Rio's largest slum. That's right. And uh, it's pretty crazy here because it says here, that the uh, sprawling hillside community is home to more than uh, all these people, and they call it a pacification, and they keep saying drugs, drugs, drugs. Well, 
like I've said this before, what happens when you are left with, when you can't grow your own, you can't go to work, right? You can't work for someone else. Um, you can't have your own business, um, as a le quote, legally. You can't farm to make your own food. Uh, you're going to be, you're going to, you can't, and, and you're going to beg, borrow, um, if you can, panhandle. If you can't do any of those things, you're going to do what? You're going to steal. You're going to deal drugs. That's that's why you go in most urban areas. You're usually going to have that because there's no economy. There's no local economy because they're not meant to be. Um, and then we move on here, and we see that the pacification of these people are. Uh, it, it's just like um, it's just like in China, right? There are a bunch of poor people, makeshift homes. I mean, we all know in Rio de, Rio de Janeiro, they're basically makeshift homes. They might as well be homeless. They're shacks. And they go in there, and they're and and they're just you know they're doing this, so um, and it's all uh, uh, for the upcoming sports events, the gladiator events, and of course we have this. I didn't want to cover it because of the um, the almighty illuminated AP. I don't want to uh, 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 mess with them in any way, right? They're untouchable, like Lady Gaga on them. It says here at least 38 injured in anti-mining protests. This is a big deal. Farmers demanding a ban on mining in the region uh, blocked access to the Peruvian highlands. Um, it says here on Friday after a violent clash with police that left 38 people injured November 11th. So the, the, the gist of this first video is what? You're seeing the claws, the fangs, the talons of this economic order, of this uh, uh, global cabal, financial cabal, whatever you want to call it, uh, cartel. Um, just base, really just right out in the open, just exploiting wherever they want. Just like, get out of here, you poor people, you uh, you have knots, whatever. Just get out of here. We're just going to, you know, uh, cattle prod you, whatever, uh, pre-dawn raids. You know, you're just too pesky. You don't look good for the Olympics and stuff like that. You're not going to draw in revenue. Chinese TV host says regime is nearly in bankrupt. That means what? Possible wars. That's usually what happens or follows. All major economies heading for slowdowns, says the Organization for Economic Cooperation and development. I'm going to move fast here, so stick with me. All of the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description. Brazilians protest oil royalty bill. So that's right. They're uh, protesting how it's going to be nationalized and it's going to go to other parts of the country. So it's crazy here because they're saying that they would e equally redistribute the country's oil revenues around the country, and it says that all states like Rio de Janeiro would be uh, uh, stand to lose hundreds of millions. Well, let's look. They all have shacks, so they're obviously it hasn't been helping those poor people to begin with, right? And then they dingle this in front of people. Oh, now we're not going to have the Olympics if we don't if if we nationalize the oil. Here we go. Police disperse rally of 3,000 laid off bank employees in Beijing. Next up, Freedom Alert Occupy prote protest may turn violent. I've already said it's going to happen, followed by reactionary decline into martial law. St. Louis, Salt Lake City, and Denver crack down on Occupy Wall Street protesters. This is what? This is unilateral. This is all around the world. That means that this has been decided unilaterally, globally, to start cracking down. Police raid Occupy Oakland campsite, so they're letting you bang your pots and pans and now it's over China's veterans impoverished protests suppressed next stop here so the veterans are protesting now we've heard this story Greek workers why laid back image is largely a myth talking about in Europe Spain's long lunches under threat now see these people actually lived productively they had low stress they all they, a lot of them smoked I know Spain I've been there they have big smokers they smoke they drink and they have long vacations because they live with balance and now that's going, and they don't like it, right? The bankers are taking over. Goldman Sachs is taking you over. European Ponzi goes full retard as EFSF found to monetize itself. The EU's architect never meant it to be a democracy. Hmm, the rise of a technocracy. Ooh, a technocracy was always part of the plan for Europe. That's right. I, I like talking about that. Merkel urges overhaul of European Union for what? Closer political ties. That means integration, less representation, and a tighter budget rules. That means more regulation. Hmm, sounds nice. It says here, Mario Monti, who's going to take over for Berlusconi, is what? Trilateral Commission, uh, uh, Bilderberg Group. Real nice stuff, right? Chinese ratings, just like in where you have ex-bankers taken over as well. And it says here, Buffett bills $10 billion stake in IBM. Chinese ratings agency threatens U.S. with new debt down. And he's getting out of all that uh, phony investment. He's getting into the real stuff, IBM. Home prices in U.S. may drop additional 8%, says PIMCO. Then we have cities hit as funds from bonds pay other bills. 
robbing Peter to pay for Paul. I, Obama seeks new Pacific influence. We're here to stay. And look at this. Enough's enough on the wand, says Obama. So now he's threatening them. That's like war talk, guys. This is GGN. I'm Darko. Thank you.